Hello, faithful gamers. Today I'm reviewing Infamous, which, contrary to popular belief, is not the sequel to Famous. Anyway, Infamous is a PlayStation 3 console exclusive, released in 2008 and is a three-dimensional open world game. The main antagonist in taking the role of your avatar through the entire game is Cole McGrath, a friendly neighbourhood bike messenger with electrical superpowers, but we'll talk more about that later. The game combines platform, shooting, roleplay and puzzle elements, which offers a lot of variety, and also includes a karma system which allows you to be very, very good or ridiculously evil. For the cinematic look of the game, the developers have borrowed heavily from such films as The Dark Knight and Terminator Salvation, dark and gritty, which seems to be a popular style for stories set in post-apocalyptic worlds these days. Unfortunately, in this game, it looks as though someone has scribbled on the screen with a 2B pencil, then wiped it with a wet tea bag. Although the detail is very impressive, the destroyed city in which you play is very realistic, with believable rubble and debris littering the streets. There is one particular style that irritates me. Any time danger is approaching, the camera performs a complicated zip pan straight to it in order to warn you, which in my opinion makes it all a little bit too easy. Come on, Infamous, I'd like a challenge once in a while. The setting for the game is the fictional Empire City, a present day environment which has been badly damaged by an almighty explosion. As I said before, it is highly detailed with realistic rust and rubble. But for me, the realistic damage and decay takes the fun of the overall gameplay away and is quite depressing to look at. However, it is a big realistic city and you can make it your electricity charged playground. Initially, it is hard to get around. You can't use cars, public transport or swim due to your disability of being a giant electrical conductor. But you can use your superpowers to skid on train tracks and power cables, which can be quite fun once you've mastered it. And there's also a free running ability allowing you to climb buildings and tall objects, giving you a great view of the virtual city. Does the game take place in real time? I've no idea. There's no clock option, and as far as the weather goes, it's either overcast or night. The non-playable characters are highly interactive and detailed. They're dirty and wear ragged clothing, and really look like survivors of a bomb blast. Depending on the karma system, passers-by will either cheer you on or boo and throw debris and rocks depending on whether you're good or evil. They can also present various side missions, and injured NPCs can be healed with your electrical powers to gain experience points, which is a nice addition to the overall gameplay and keeps the player entertained and interested. The surroundings are very interactive, with the ability to skate on the monorail tracks and power cables. You have an ability to drain power from various electrical devices, including cars and generators, and everything can be damaged with your powers, from cars to people to petrol station. As I said, you can drain power from generators, but first you must restart the main generator in that area, which is heavily guarded. But after you've done it, you gain a new power for your troubles. Power can also be drained from pedestrians, but that's naughty and gives you bad karma, which makes you a very, very nasty person. For shame. There's also a ridiculous low health warning, which is just frankly annoying and a little bit over the top. The screen becomes blurred and black and white. It may sound like a great virtual style, but surely a flashing low health bar would be more efficient, as this only serves to distract the gamer. Overall, there are 17 types of electrical powers, ranging from small to immensely devastating, although some can give you bad karma as they can hurt nearby pedestrians. And the cutscenes in FMVs, or full motion videos, are very impressive. They are designed to look like comic book panels in keeping with the overall superhero tone of the game. The main character provides a narration of these panels, but his voice sounds like a cement mixer full of gravel on fire, which can be quite irritating after a while. Every aspect of the main character has been designed to make him look dangerous and intimidating, including a bald head and stubble. Even his outfit is black and yellow, which is nature's warning colours. Your powers can be used against live targets in the environment. For example, you can detonate generators in order to take down multiple opponents. There is a hidden ability to recharge your powers where you blast a shard of metal, then suck the electricity from it. But as handy as this is, it's unfortunately regarded as a cheat. The game sometimes presents you with karma moments, a good choice or a bad choice. Although a player can start off with bad karma and work towards good karma and vice versa, you can gain further powers such as gliding as the game progresses. There is a high level of addiction in the game due to the complicated storyline and the fact that every mission ends on a cliffhanger. Almost like a video game of the TV show Lost, but better than the actual video game of the TV show Lost, which was just awful. The frankly insane plot sees the main character Cole, a bike messenger with a name half Irish and half of the word coleslaw, delivering a package then opening it, which makes it explode and kill everyone in the area but give you electricity based superpowers, which is kind of hard to believe. 
There's more stuff about a virus and you and your sidekick trying to escape the now quarantine city and blah blah blah. Everything builds down to go here and kill this, which is very unimaginative. The subplots are more tangled in a ball of elastic bands, and eventually as a player you just stop caring about the plot. Just because the story is very complicated doesn't mean it's actually good, it's just very annoying. So overall that's infamous. It's highly stylized with a fair level of gameplay, but with a bonkers storyline that makes little sense that drags it down. Frankly it has the potential to be a fun game, but it just doesn't use it, instead of focusing on being gritty and realistic. Still, with a sequel coming soon and a movie adaption in the works, it seems to have made an electricity charged dent in the gaming community. Thanks very much for listening to this review. I hope it was very informative and you enjoyed it. Bye bye.